I'd want to start by welcoming Steve Bambury. Uh, Steve is uh, the head of digital learning and innovation at Jess Dubai, and he's speaking with us all the way from Dubai. So, welcome, Steve. I am indeed. Uh, we're ready to go, yeah? Okay. All right, guys. Um, can everyone hear me okay? All, all, both, all three of you? <laughs> yep, I can hear you. Lovely. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Alex, I think you might have heard this before anyway. Um, so what I uh, had suggested to Mike that I would talk about for the Emerging Realities event was the, uh, the periodic table of AR and VR apps that I put together along with a guy called Mark Anderson earlier in uh, 2018. Obviously, I do a lot of stuff with um, uh, higher level VR and, and a lot of it based around the HTC Vive. But the simple fact is that due to the logistics and economics, most schools are still working uh, within the mobile VR uh, ecosystem if they are indeed um, exploring the, the potential of VR in the classroom. So the session we're going to go through uh how this whole project came about how we actually built it how we went about selecting the apps and the process that went on there how we uh debated and uh discussed the categories um some of the highlights in each of the categories um then i'll just explain a little bit about the thing link version and then there'll be a chance for any questions at the end so yeah so this um project was a collaboration between myself and my good friend mark anderson who uh you can find online uh, ict evangelist uh, if you're from outside of the UK, you may not have heard of Mark, but if you're a teacher in the UK, you pretty much definitely have heard of Mark. Um, Alex, who's in the audience here, and myself, we both met Mark in 2015 when we became uh, Apple Distinguished Educators, and we met Mark at the uh, the Apple Institute in Amsterdam, uh, and both of us become fast friends with him. Uh, he's uh, one of the most innovative teachers in the world. He's uh, a best-selling author, keynote speaker, and, and he is a prolific sharer of, uh, of content for free via his website and his social media platforms. Um, and one of the things that he's become most well known for and, and some of the content that he's, he's had shared um, the most widely are his periodic tables of apps. Um, you may have seen these before. You may have seen um, the, the most famous ones are his iPad ones, uh, but he has done other variations, including ones based around STEM and STEAM. And he's even done a one around the, the periodic table of educational tweeters. So um, around about last November, Mark asked me, um, because of all the work I'd been doing with VR, if I'd be interested in collaborating on one that was specifically uh, focused on VR and AR, um, which, of course, I was more than happy to do. So the, the whole project started in a, in a Google Doc, uh, which I put together here, and Mark and myself spent uh, a couple of weeks um, in, in investigating, exploring the ecosystem, and adding more and more to the document um, changing and playing around with some of the category headings. They, these are uh, screenshots you see here that haven't actually been published anywhere else. Um, and it was just a, at that stage, it was it was an ongoing process of just collating all of the content. Um, there was actually a second page to the document at the time, which was an HTC Vive page, because for a while we did consider um, that it wasn't going to be just mobile apps. It was going to be a broader uh, AR and VR uh, document. But we quickly found that there was enough apps just within um, the, the mobile ecosystem that we could um, we, we could put something together without dipping into the, uh, the the Steam VR and Oculus Store. Then, of course, um, around about this time, iOS 11 kicked in, and this had two um, major impacts on our project. Number one, the fact that um, because of the updates to iOS 11, certain apps. Um, become defunct, they become redundant, they no longer worked, uh, they had, hadn't been updated to the, uh, to the requirements to meet iOS 11. And so we found ourselves in a position where some of the apps on our list um, no longer worked. But we knew for a fact that in some cases that would only be a temporary situation because uh, the developers would be working on updating the apps. In other situations though, these developers perhaps no longer existed, so the apps no longer existed. On top of that, we had the simple fact that iOS 11 heralded the launch of the AR kit, um, um, empowered apps, and suddenly there was a, a new range of content that was was coming through that was running on Apple's new AR kit. At the time, I uh, was waiting out the iPhone X. My iPad Air 2 wasn't powerful enough to run any of the AR kit stuff, so um, I was in a position where I couldn't even test any of these apps that were coming out. So we decided to hold tight. 
uh, and we waited out through uh, December and we picked the project back up um, just after Christmas um, in the lead up to the BET uh, conference in London, which Mark was one of the speakers at. And Mark decided that he would like to get the project turned around so that he could debut it at BET when he was getting high traffic through um, his social media channels. So we started to uh, collate the apps uh, into uh, uh, refine the list of the apps and we started to collate the icons and gather them up. Um, we decided in the end after some discussion that we would have these eight categories. Now because the periodic table is based on the, the classic periodic table, Mark said from the start there needs to be eight categories. There was some discussion and debate here. Um, Mark wanted to replace the, the science category with STEM. Uh, I contended that they needed to both be on there separately because otherwise the, the, the sheer range of apps in that category was essentially half the table. And that some of the content that was specifically to do with the sciences, like things like the, uh, the chemistry apps, maybe the, the space themed apps, the dinosaur apps, weren't necessarily anything to do with STEM. So we ended up with STEM, geography, art, science, history, and then storytelling, and then two slightly broader categories which was teaching and the creativity category. At this point, we started to put the table together. We uh, used this in, uh, did this in Keynote. Um, Mark has traditionally used Photoshop for these projects because he's always done them before. This was the first time, uh, so excuse me, he's always done them alone. This was the first time he collaborated on one of the periodic tables with someone. Um, so um, he brought his template over into Keynote and we used Keynote to begin to populate uh, the content, and you can see here again, this is something that we've not published anywhere. This is a, uh, a an early shot as we were starting to to bring the apps in. Um, something you might notice if you've actually seen the document before is that some of the apps that are on here at the moment here aren't actually on the final version because right up to the last minute we were finding that uh, apps were picking up on apps that had uh, had been uh, closed down or a new app had been released and we felt that it had to be included. Um, there were actually two or three apps that were released at BET um, that were phenomenal and would definitely have merited inclusion, um, but unfortunately had arrived just slightly too late. Um, and we are queuing them up for perhaps a sequel sometimes next year. And there we go. There is the, the final uh, product. This has had close to 200,000 impressions. Uh, on the original post alone from when Mark uh, tweeted this out live from BET. That's not including all of the reposts. It's not including any of my posts and links to it. Um, I mentioned as well, uh, one thing that Mark did, once we completed it, uh, completely on his own, he took this into ThingLink and put an interactive tag on top of all 82 of these apps that links to the iOS store. So all of them uh, can be clicked and you can go straight to download the app. That interactive version, uh, Mark just tweeted today, has been um, interacted with on, uh, on ThingLink 17,000 times since we launched, which is quite phenomenal. Um, we have been asked about why we did iOS apps. Obviously, we're both Apple Distinguished Educators. We work a lot with Apple devices. We both are heavily heavy users of um, to be honest, both Apple and Microsoft devices, but neither of us are, are very big Android users. Um, well, we're not Android users at all, to be honest. But the simple fact is that the lion's share of the apps that you see up here are also available on, on uh, Android. There's only just a few that are exclusive to the, the iPad, but broadly they are available on both platforms. So what I'm gonna do is just break down each of the, each of the plat uh, excuse me, each of the categories talk a little bit about it and just give you just kind of one highlight from from myself my choice for something that i'd like to highlight that that i felt really merited inclusion so the history apps uh there's 10 apps in the history section the vr apps were more, more common in terms of history um i mentioned before that obviously the, the ecosystem is constantly evolving and in fact if we were to do this again today i would definitely include the amazing bbc civilizations app that launched last month uh, absolutely phenomenal augmented reality app that's come out for uh, for teaching about uh, ancient civilizations. But as it was at the time, we, there was uh, there was definitely more virtual reality apps with key brands being Lithodomus, Time Looper, and Inspiro. Uh, the Inspiro apps in particular are, are apps that I've used a lot at the at Jester Bio where I work. Um, I've literally got a project next week using their Viking apps 
uh, both their augmented and virtual reality ones. Um, and just yesterday, some of us uh, year six students were using their World War One uh, trench experience uh, as well. Um, and the uh, the managing director of Inspire actually contacted me last week and said that they're in the process of making all of their content completely free to schools, which is phenomenal news because they are some of the uh, the highest quality historical um, immersive apps that I've seen. Um, the ones that I'm going to highlight though are the the Lithodomus ones. Lithodomus content is all free, um, and some of it's available on the HTC Vive as well. But the the reason I'd like to highlight the Lithodomus um, offerings. For example, their Athens app that you can see on the right-hand side there, and their, I believe this is the Jerusalem one on the left, is the, the level of interactivity. Quite often with mobile apps, the level of interactivity is very, very low. Uh, you, you, you're normally quite a passive user of, of, of mobile virtual reality apps in that you'll be uh, engaging with content just by looking around. Whereas with the Lithodomus apps, um, as long as you have a mobile headset with some sort of uh, control trigger, you can actually interact with the content in many cases you can move around um, which is quite rare um, broadly in terms of mobile apps so there's definitely something to look out for if you're a history teacher or interested in historical VR. Next up was the R apps, uh, quite a small category, six apps broadly split between VR gallery tours and uh, augmented rea uh, reality uh, painting apps which became a thing with the launch of the AR kit um, essentially augmented reality versions of a kind of classic tilt brush experience. Um, what I'd highlight here is the Google Arts and Culture, which is perhaps a little less, um, perhaps a little less well known than uh, some of Google's other apps like Google Expeditions and Google Street View. The great thing about Arts and Culture um, is that it's free and it's, it contains a huge wealth of really, really high quality tours of museums and galleries and historical sites. Um, we've used this with students as, as low as year one. Um, as I say, completely free and um, definitely something that's worth checking out. It's another app as well that will work on a browser. So if you're in a situation where you haven't got one-to-one -one mobile headsets, you can have some students engaging via a headset whilst other students perhaps just use a tablet or even a, a desktop PC. Third category is geography, one of the most obvious categories in terms of immersive education. Um, 10 apps, a mixture of AR and VR with a variety of themes. Again, I would highlight the fact that if I was to make this again today, I would definitely include the recently released um, Free Rivers app from the WWF. Absolutely phenomenal augmented reality experience that just launched, uh, also free. Um, the one I would highlight this time, though, is um, slightly out of left field, and it's one of the few apps on the on the table that in, uh, needs to be used with a peripheral, with a, a an actual physical object. So this is something that I was sent um, from the company that developed it over in China. It's called the NeoBear um, Globe and the NeoBear AR app that goes with it. Now there are several um, augmented reality globes available on the market and, and several variations on this theme. But what's amazing about the NeoBear one is that it can overlay so many different types of data in a really, really child-friendly way. So you can see just these two screenshots here, which are actually my two young children playing with it. You can view the globe and make the world's, um, the, the famous wonders of the world, the most famous buildings in the different countries appear in augmented reality on the globe. But similarly, you can bring up, you see on the right, you can bring up uh, the locations of the of famous people that have come from around the world. You can bring up images of animals from around the world, of cuisine from around the world, of, of uh, the, uh, the clothing that relates to different parts of the world. You can even use uh, the app to um, turn the globe instead into the sun and have the universe rotating around the sun. You can use it to be the globe and split the globe open in augmented reality and, and peer inside and look at the core. The range of content on this augmented reality globe is absolutely stunning. And it's relatively cheap, even if you factor in shipping it from China, which is the only place it's currently available. Um, but they are looking to release worldwide uh, later in the year. Next up is the storytelling one. Now, we did consider calling this English or literacy, but in the end, we settled with storytelling. Um, it's kind of a, in some ways, it's an untapped uh, area for um, immersive 
experiences like AR and VR, but we're starting to get a little bit more. So what we've got here is we've mainly included narrative apps. So apps where you've got 360 films, 360 stories, um, there are some augmented reality. Uh, some, there is some augmented reality content, like the uh, Hungry Caterpillar one that released with, with the launch of the AR kit, suitable for a huge range of ages and themes. Um, the one that I would highlight here has got to be within, which I'm sure you've probably heard of, uh, Chris Milk's company, absolutely world class, award winning VR storytelling company. Um, the one at the top, Cloud Service Citra, is perhaps the most famous. But the content that they're producing really is stunning. Um, two others that I highly recommend are Giant and Fistful of Stars. But they put content out on a regular basis. It's very thoughtful. I'm actually in the process right now of putting together something on my website, which is essentially uh, a collection of uh, reading comprehension style activities to go with the films within, within, within. The one caveat I would say with regards to within is this. So recently I was asked to uh, by one of our STEM teachers uh, if I had something to do, um, so a, a VR experience that related to robots. And I said, ah, oh, no, brilliant, brilliant film um, about uh, about robots and, and, and the, the, the work of the, um, uh, it's not MIT, I, I must admit, I forget the, 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 the name of the lab that creates the, the, the walking robots, but I'm sure you've seen the videos online. Of the uh, of the humanoid robots that can do backflips and things, um, the problem was that this uh, film was inside within, and our students in our secondary school, which is where we were aiming it for, they use um, their own mobile phones to uh, to to go with our mobile VR headsets. So the problem there was that some of the content in within is quite political. You know, they they have films that have been taken from. Um, uh, political rallies and things like that and our concern was that to use the app with the students we would have to ask them to download the app which would ostensibly be giving them permission and our, um, our, our direction that they could watch any of the content and that we were endorsing this content um, which in some cases because they were 11 and 12 years old we did not think it was appropriate. Um, I tell you this story mainly to highlight the importance of uh, checking the content very carefully before you um, deliver any content uh, in a VR platform to your students. Next up is science, which is a huge, huge, huge category for this type of stuff. 18 apps in total, and that was even after we'd split science and STEM in half. A real mix of AR and VR, biology, chemistry, astronomy, dinosaurs, all this kind of stuff. Some great, great stuff. Um, the app that I'm going to highlight here is Mars Walk. Of all of the mobile VR applications that are out there, I genuinely believe that Marswalk is perhaps one of the most advanced that there is. Um, it's the closest that you'll get to uh, a more immersive experience like I'm in right now using the HTC Vive or using the Oculus Rift or something similar because you actually get this full, uh, the, the full ability to move, to interact. Um, it, it's it's a much higher level um, than, than most of the VR content that's out there. By comparison, there's another app out there called uh, Mars VR that is literally just a, a model of the surface of Mars, um, and that's it. Um, whereas the Mars Walk is actually produced by uh, Lockheed Martin. These are the guys that are making the space rockets, so they know this stuff. And um, this is all based on um, on their projects and their research, and uh, it's a phenomenal experience. Another one that I would recommend, uh, there's not actually an app, it's a web VR experience that will work on any device. Is uh, Access Mars, which was produced by um, Google and NASA's uh, Jet Propulsion Lab. Um, that, that's the only other one I think that's comparable to Marswalk. Uh, Marswalk is free as well. Brilliant app. So then we had the STEM ones. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, this is perhaps the most contentious category for me. Um, but uh, Obviously, any collaboration comes with compromise. Uh, 12 apps in total, AR and VR apps, a mix of maths, coding, uh, DT and physics. So for example, we've got stuff like Tickle there, which has long been one of the most popular uh, Blockly-based coding apps on, on mobile devices. Um, I've used it in the past to code spheros and drones and things like that. Well, Tickle have now included uh, the ability to, to code simple augmented reality experiences. We've actually uh, done some of that with some of our year five students. Uh, the app that I'm going to spotlight here is another space-themed one, actually, but it's one that um, 
I actually have experience using for STEM projects. So we used uh, NASA spacecraft 3D, which has been out for some time, but it's, it's recently kind of had a bit of a, a relaunch. Um, somebody posted it on social the other day as if it was brand new. And I said, I've, I've been using this app for five years, but it's kind of had a, um, a bit of a relaunch with the AR kit and AR core um, features enabled. So you no longer need the trigger sheets that you traditionally used to have, but essentially it allows you to pull various rockets and, and spacecraft into uh, the physical space. You can see my youngest daughter over there standing next to a, a rover. Um, we use this, as I mentioned, for a STEM project. Uh, our students were uh, doing a space-themed topic, and they were uh, uh, going to complete a STEM project, which was to build their own uh, version of a rover. So they used this app so that they could uh, inspect the actual rovers, uh, they could scale them up, they could look at them from any angle within the classroom, and they used that as the inspiration for the design stage of their project. Next up, and I, I, I realize I haven't checked, I'm, I'm praying that my slides, Alex, give me a nod, are my slides moving along with me as I speak? Yeah? Fantastic. Okay, so next up is the creativity section, which is quite a broad title. Um, we just we ended up with a couple of apps and we weren't too sure where to put them. The Lego one originally was in the storytelling category, but we realized that you could do so much more with it than just actually telling stories. Um, these are mostly augmented reality experiences, though, um, and apps that can be used across the curriculum. So apps like um, HP Reveal, which um, was bizarrely renamed to this from its traditional name of Erasma. Uh, Quiver, the, the, the long-time favorite in the classrooms for augmented reality coloring. Blipper, which is another favorite one. Um, so the app I chose to, uh, to spotlight here is one that's perhaps a little uh, less well-known. Although since uh, Jamie spotlighted it on one of her AR, VR, and EDU um, Twitter chats, it, it's picked up a little bit. But this was an app I discovered last year called Roomful which allows you to build uh, augmented, excuse me, virtual reality galleries using your own media. So you can actually see uh, this image on the right hand side. Uh, the pictures there are from my CPD and VR events where um, like similar to this, where I've hosted sessions inside virtual reality. Um, these are ones from last year. Um, so you can take your own pictures and you can build your own gallery. You can then share that gallery with people. They can actually leave feedback and comments on your gallery. Um, this has also just been updated to include augmented reality technology using ARKit, so you can pull your elements from your gallery out into the, the real world, which is a really nice addition. Then we have the teaching section, and again, it's kind of a broad headline, I know. Um, let me just check the time. Nearly finished. Um, 11 apps featured, content libraries and lesson builders. Some could be used by students as well as teachers. These were the ones that we felt that could be used, that would be used more uh, perhaps in a didactic way. Things like expeditions where you're leading students through uh, and can, they contain content that is across the curriculum. Expeditions doesn't just include geography content. Nearpod, which again contains a wealth of lessons. Even things like Metaverse, which can be used to build uh, activities by the teacher. Uh, as I say though, these can obviously be used by the students as well as the teachers. The app that I would highlight here is uh, Jigspace, which was perhaps when, when the AR kit apps launched, this was probably my favorite new augmented reality app um, because it was really did seem that, that one of the only ones that was really focused towards education and it had a huge range of content, including his history stuff and science-based stuff. Um, it was referred to as the evolution of Wikipedia because essentially it's augmented reality diagrams. You can see a little snapshot on the left here of my laptop. Um, with this, um, with the object to the printing press on top of it, and you can see the labels, and you can actually click through the arrows on the bottom corner, and you can move it through various stages um, and learn more about it. So there you go, guys. Um, that's the uh, the periodic table of iOS apps for AR and VR. You can find that on both uh, Mark's website, which is uh, ictevangelist.com. You, you can find it on there, along with high resolution version for, that can be downloaded for free. Uh, you can also read his take on the project. You can jump onto my website, virtualityteach.com, and you can read my take on the project, and you can download it from there. Uh, both have links to the, uh, the version that's on, uh, the interactive version on ThingLink as well. By all means, do follow me on uh, social media as well, Steve underscore Bambri or Virtualiteach, and Mark is at ICT Evangelist. And I will say thank you very much. And are there any questions before I vamoose? 
Alex, you're nodding your head, buddy, but I can't hear you. You want to ask me a question? Is it what time are we going to the VR park on Saturday? Is that your question? <laughs> yeah, about 10 o'clock. Um, <laughs> are there any questions before I skedaddle? Because obviously here in Dubai, it is getting kind of late. I heard something. No? All good. Guys, thank you very much for listening. Appreciate your time. And uh, yep, do connect with me on social. And uh, thank you very much. Ooh, thank you. All right. Thank you, Steve.